When I'm giving a lecture or doing a demonstration, I'm very often asked by beekeepers how to put a queen cell in a colony. And um, it makes me wonder the number of times that I've been asked uh, how often it's actually taught at local beekeeping associations um, or, or, you know, the normal teaching uh, methods. Um, so what this uh, little video is about is to do a little demonstration of inserting queen cells into uh, colonies. <laughs> I've got here two uh, queen cells. That is an emergency cell. You see it's coming from, from the uh, midrib. And that is either a supersedure cell or a swarm cell um, because it was built from originally from a cup. Even if it's from a bad colony, I've just got into the habit of when I do cut them, cut them out is to um, uh, cut a few of them out with plenty of uh, comb on so that I can then if I do need them I can put them into a uh, into a comb it only needs two or three um, and then the rest you can uh, uh, you can destroy at, uh, at your leisure but it's surprising how often you you need them if the bees um, think they've got a, a queen or something that satisfies them they've got a queen, even perhaps a laying worker, they will reject any queen cell that you put in simply by chewing it to chewing it down. So what we can do is to uh, prevent that by covering up the area that they would um, usually uh, use. Uh, you can buy little cell protectors which are either the spiral wire ones with a spike on the end called a West Cell Protector, um, or the modern equivalent, which are made out of plastic. They just fit straight over the uh, end of the um, uh, a queen cell, and then you just push it in, in into the comb. And the cell protector uh, prevents bees chewing in from the side, but exposes the tip of the uh, queen cell where the bees won't, uh, won't won't chew into it now we can um, find other ways of doing that uh, and one way that i use is using a silver foil a piece that's about I don't know, 70 or 80 millimeters square usually something like that we can uh, you can very often uh, rip it off right so fold it fold it one way fold it the other way and then all i do is just cut the cut the corner off when you fold it out or open it out rather You've got a little hole in there you can just push your queen cell through it so it just exposes the end and then wrap your foil around make sure you don't squash or damage the the, the, uh, the queen cell and then with that you can then put that in your uh, in your colony. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now, what will happen is the bees can thin down the end of the uh, cell. Queen can um, uh, chew round the uh, the cap and uh, release herself. And critically, the bees cannot chew into the side of this foil. Now, a tiny tip: uh, you can get plastic that looks very much like this. And if you crumple this up, it stays crumpled. If you crumple plastic up, it recovers. And what I found is that the bees can, uh, can uh, chew, chew through the plastic. 
and do quite to quite readily so that is a nice easy way of doing it uh, all you need is um, is to uh, uh, take a, a few pieces of this and uh, keep it until you actually need it uh, queen cells when you put them in a colony uh, you obviously got two situations either queenless or um, um, uh, recently queenless so so the bees probably think that they still got a queen or they may have may feel they got a queen of some description or, or another uh, that is why um, you would either use what one might term a, a naked queen cell if they're if they definitely queenless um, then uh, you can use a, a naked a queen cell if they've only recently been made queenless or they've got something there that they, they think might be a, might be a, a queen you need to protect uh, the cell so all I'm going to do is this colony is actually queen right but on just for the purpose of the demonstration I'm just going to take a frame out and put a queen cell in how I would normally do it now, if possible, the queen cell needs to be uh, where brood is. Certainly where bees would um, put a queen cell. So if you want to replace a, uh, a queen cell, let's say you're cutting them out of a colony, very often um, there's a space created where you can put another one in. Don't do what I have seen, is put a queen cell on a, a food comb. It needs to be within the area or the brood area either where there is brood or where you would expect to be brood and as i already said very often uh, where an old queen cell has been or where you've just taken one out is going to be probably uh, ideal so let's just go through this colony have a look and see if we can find a comb where we can put this uh, put a um, um put a queen cell now uh, that is <laughs> that is in the middle of the brood nest um i generally like to have a hole or perhaps uh down the uh down the uh, side um that is actually quite a good comb um so there's no natural hole there in most colonies there's somewhere that you can put a uh, put to put a queen cell Here's a, a place you've got brood right up to the edge. Look, so you've got a gap down the side there, and you've got another gap down the uh, down the side there. So those those will be two ideal places because you've got brood fairly close uh, to them. It's a reasonably populous colony, and they can look uh, uh, look, look after it. But I'm going to actually just put that frame back and see if I can find somewhere uh, that might perhaps be a little bit better. Certainly, if I've got one with a with a hole at the top, well, I've got to, I've got another place here. Look down there, down the side of that, down the side of there is going to be okay. Bees very often will put queen cells are right along the bottom so you you you'll be okay in a colony like like, like this i'm just going to go to this one last frame and then uh believe it or that i haven't got much on there so i'm just going to pick on this this last comb so um, please excuse the demonstration, but um, I'm actually going to look for the queen on here. Um, you wouldn't normally do that, of course, because um, the colony should be should be queenless. So I can't see her on there, but what I'll do is I'll shake the bees off. Um, don't forget to do it crossways. I don't like going down in, inside there because... Um, I have seen uh, queens killed. Um, I know we're expecting the colony to be a, a queenless, but this one isn't. So just shake those bees off. Um, have a look, see which side is the uh, best. There's probably not much in it. Now the queen cells that I've got, 
I've got two natural queen cells here with comb on. And the reason I've left the comb is so that um, I can uh, I can use it to um, uh, fix the uh, fix the queen cell. So what you can do is just pull that apart a little bit like that. Fix the queen cell in like like so. Make sure it it, it, it can't drop because if it drops to the floor, then it won't. Um, it won't emerge so if you if I come back tomorrow that will be fixed in by the bees uh, almost as if it was a natural um, a cell so that is one way of doing it like so now I'll pick on the other side now because that's um that's fairly fresh So now I've got this queen cell here. I've got this area here. So if I just pull that about just a little bit to allow space to get the queen cell in. And then push that in, and I'm pushing in on the on the comb. Uh, this the back, so I'm not touching the queen cell at all. If you want to push it in just a little bit more, then perhaps you can, but that is definitely not going to uh, drop off. And there is um, uh, there is another one. That's um, that is the. Uh, either the swarm cell or the super procedure cell. So we'll take both of those two out, don't need those. Now we've got the other uh, comb that's got, uh, got a similar gap on. So we can now show The naked uh, queen cell that's been grafted and also the protected one. Now what I didn't mention with the protected one was I generally put quite a bit of uh, foil at the top here because sometimes you can put these down between uh, combs and then just fold over that bit there to sort of hook onto the top, fr top frame. I'm not going to bother to do that here because I've got fixed spacing and I'm not going to be able to do that. But if I haven't got fixed spacing, then that is is um, quite easy to do. So, right, so, check to see that the queen isn't on there. But of course, I will repeat that it um, uh, wouldn't normally do that because you'd have a queenless colony. Can't see her on there. But shake off the bees. Right now, with this type, that little lip that's around the edge is very good, I find, for, for actually pushing in, pushing into the comb. So again, with a gap, brood right up to the edge. So just bring it away a little bit like that. allows you to put that in like that and away you go and the bees will fix that in very very quickly uh, within almost minutes certainly within an hour or so right so that's a naked one um, you need to try and make sure there's plenty of room for, of course for the queen to emerge from the tip of the uh, cell now the other one is the protected cell which usually needs a little bit more space so let's just check um, we've got an area 
let's go the other side of other side of that so push that out out of the way <laughs> take the queen cell and just push it into the gap there like that make sure you don't push by the queen cell itself and there you are all done if you haven't got a, a gap uh, down the side of the comb then what you can do is either take your hive tool or your thumb above the brood somewhere like so take your queen cell and insert like that same with the protected cell or the na the natural cell and just move that move the bees away and push those in and just push in by the uh by the, by the wax And then of course you put that back in and um and, and away you go if you want to you can put the drawing pin immediately above the uh, cell so you know which frame it's on uh, or perhaps just mark it with a queen marking uh, pen now there is a little trick to this uh, because if you've got a bad tempered colony and you can't find the queen an old trick is to take a protected queen cell and just put it in the colony somewhere and um i would think in 80 percent of the cases you'll end up with a, a a natural cell procedure the young queen will take over the uh, the old queen i don't quite know why that works um but certainly the old beekeepers used to do it when i started uh, keeping bees um I, I've never seen it in books or anything like that, but it's just an old trick that I've used on quite a lot of occasions and it works most of the time. 